Have you heard about the new Aston Martin DBX? The fastest, most powerful SUV in history. It's called the DBX 707. Well, if you haven't heard about it, that's what we're going to talk about right here in this video. There, I have a lot of stuff that I want to talk about when it comes to this specific SUV. It's got a, uh, let's just quickly go over the spec and tech. It's got a 4 liter twin turbo V8 with 707 horsepower and it's, this makes it the most powerful and the fastest luxury SUV on the planet. 0 to 60 I think about three and a half seconds or something like that. So what I want to talk to you about is first of all the design compared to the regular DBX. Show you the differences between the two and what I, which one I prefer between these two and then talk about the overall concept of trying to make an SUV into more of a uh, track handling machine and the philosophy that, that kind of clashes with that state, with that objective or goal. That might sound a little complicated, but I'm gonna break it down to you <laughs> later in this video. So here, let's have a look here at this beautiful, I think it's a beautiful car, the DBX. I don't think it's it's uh, weird looking like some people do from the rear end. I do understand why they would say that. We're gonna have a look at the rear view in just a second here as well. Let's start here with the front view though, and let's have a look at the standard which is also a high performance SUV, luxury SUV up here, the regular DBX. And then we have the DBX 707 down here. Just have a look at the trend here, it continues. We're not over by far it seems to uh, with the trend of having grills just get bigger and bigger and bigger just have a look at the grill on the regular dbx up here pretty typical not too not too you know crazy decent size grill it needs some air it's a big v8 under there it's gonna need some cooling but when we talk about the 707 we're gonna have to bump that up just a little bit and have it be basically covering the entire front face of the DBX uh, 707 down here. You can see just the scale, compare these two, the two grills, and you can see that this is obviously a lot bigger. And it, I don't know if that's all functional. I can't, if we zoom in here, we can see that it looks like the whole grill is open here, all these small squares. Looks like it's pretty open. You can see the radiator back here. I don't see any holes that are covered necessarily in there. So it might be that they simply had to make the grill this big in order to have the sufficient cooling in there. And in addition to this, we ha now have a big uh, intake around the main grill. So another big grill going around the main <laughs> grill. So we have a grill framing the grill on this DBX 707. I I don't think it looks too bad. It actually suits this SUV in a way. I don't feel like uh, the, the grill is out of proportions here, weirdly, even though it is a huge grill in the front end. I think that has to do with being used with the shape of an Aston Martin grill, and it kind of looks really cool. I would not pick this uh, light gray here. They come in a blacked out version as well on the, with different wheels which i prefer over these two which i would definitely pick when if i were to buy a dbx 707 but other than that i don't really think there are any other changes in the front end this diffuse or uh, lip down here spoiler whatever you call it this is a little different here as well as you can see this is more uh, restrained more normal simple looking down here it becomes a little more complicated on the dbx 707 down there so let's have a look at the rear view and then we're going to talk about the side as well so the rear this is i think where I've heard most comments from people who don't like this design and I can I can see why if you look at it from a straight rear view it looks kind of sad with those lights dripping down like that and what I would like to do here is to have this light bar be a continuous light bar. I don't understand why they wouldn't do that maybe I think I know this isn't lit up all the time because I've seen the Vantage and the DBX out in real life but I do know that this is th there is some some sort of bar in here maybe if you're an owner or a dealer or something like that and have more uh, knowledge about these cars you can let me know what this centerpiece is for if it's just a reflector or if it's actually a brake light it might be a brake light if I'm not mistaken but the the uh, the key talking point here with the DBX in general is just this treatment of the rear end. Why, the reason why I like this rear end is, first of all, it is a pretty strong brand identity design feature for Aston Martin to have this 
Ducktail just swinging up in the rear end and very much sends the design off, which we're gonna see more in detail when we look at the side view. But I also think it creates a, a unique design for any SUV. I've never seen a treatment like this on any SUV before, and it is the Vantage rear end. I do think it suits the Vantage a lot better than it suits the DBX, but I still think it looks decent here on the DBX. Maybe they could lower, lower it a little bit, so bring it down just a little bit less than we have on the Vantage. But other than that, it's a cool design feature. And let's have a look at the differences here between the regular DBX and the sick crazy 707 down here, which gets a shelf for a diffuser down here, massive shelf down here that we don't have on the regular DBX down here. And you now how you have dual exhaust here that becomes quad exhaust on the DBX 707. And the thing that I don't like about the 707 here in the rear end is that they cut the body, the surfacing, they cut the surfacing right here to create this outlet of air right here, as you can see. And it it's an Aston Martin. Aston Martin is supposed to have beautiful, big surfaces, sculpted areas, even on the high performance models. So I'm not sure I agree with that specific detail. And I'm not sure if it's fake or not, but being an Aston Martin, I, I certainly hope that it's a real outlet there, because if it wasn't, then there we have two problems. It would be fake, and it would also not suit, in my opinion, the surfacing of an Aston Martin. In, in this case, when you jump from a uh, normal DBX to a performance version, it, you know, Aston Martin, I don't think they should add wings and stuff onto their cars. But this is overall, other than this, this is a, a pretty decent transition to a more performance oriented version with this bench right here as the diffuser and so on. Subtle changes that uh, I'm sure are all functional. And I also want to mention this side skirt right here. We get a little more angles and curvatures in the side skirts comparing to the straight lines that we have here on the regular one. Let's have a look at the side view last but not least. And then I'm going to talk about what I think about this philosophy of turning these SUVs into uh, track focused performance machines. So here we have, of course, the normal one on the top and then with the DBX uh, 707 at the bottom. I think from this view, this is probably the best view for this SR Martin or for any SR Martin. They know how to do side views very, very well. They do some of the most beautiful car automotive sculptures of all time are Aston Martins. If you look at them from side view proportions, that's what they do best. And just have a look at this line right here that goes from the front end and goes into this line right here and then just boom right up here like a ramp flying off the rear end. That's why I like the integration of the um, the Vantage duck tail on the DBX. It just sends off the design in a nice way and so it does so as well on the DBX 707. You can more clearly even see the line right here going the shoulder line and then dipping all the way down until it comes back up right here at the very end. We also have a new roof spoiler, which is more aggressive on the 707, as you can see right there. And here you can clearly see just how far this park bench sticks out in the in the in the lower part of the diffuser down there. And as I said, the curvatures right here in this little wing added to the side skirt. I'm not a huge fan of these wheels at all. I don't think they look good at all, but they do have, as I said, the other type of wheels that I'm going to show you and the other type of grill I'm going to show you at the very end of this video for the 707, which seems to be a different trim package or uh, appearance package or something like that. What I do like about the 707 over the regular one is this part I don't prefer that it I, I don't really like that they have blacked out like they're in that like this even though it is probably carbon fiber I do prefer it be a body color like this because we have this line intersecting with these two pieces and I want to have this be a continuation in color as well so overall if I were to pick the regular D07 or the 707 DBX I would definitely go with the standard one basically because now we're gonna talk about the philosophy here this to me is like putting a, a a sumo wrestler on the starting blocks of a 100 meter sprint it doesn't matter how well you try to engineer a big heavy SUV to go fast and handle well around corners you still can't break the laws of physics and it doesn't matter how well engineered and as a performance SUV is like this it's never going to be the pinnacle of track performance that you're gonna 
might get from any company simply beca because of the taller height and the overall proportions of what an SUV is. It's just laws that you can't break. It's laws of nature. So even though I do like powerful SUVs, I see the potential and I see them being people are buying them like crazy. There is definitely a huge marketing value in that because people love these type of SUVs. But the point where I get lost in is when they're trying to make them into track focused handling sports cars because that's something that it can never be and it's trying to push something into something that it is impossible for an SUV to ever be. But at the same time I want this DBX 707 as well and if it was me I would pick it in the different styling package in satin grey titanium with the different wheels and the blacked out grille in the front end. Oh, my God.